What happens when a bloodthirsty assassin meets an elite fighter with an insatiable lust for battle? Hmm. Many of you have asked me to react to something from this series and what better place to start than the match between Takeda Oma and Ryan Curie. These two men are everything you can hope for in a fighter. And as you will see, practically freaking invincible. In one corner, we have Ryan Kyure, arguably the most powerful member of the Kyure clan, a ruthless clan of assassins who have spent many generations selectively breeding for peak physical performance and developing techniques for dominance in battle. In the other hand, we have Takeda Oma, a rough and tumble orphan who grew up fending for himself until he was taken in by a Yakuza enforcer named Nico Takeda, who gave him his name and instructed him in the Nico martial arts style. This style places a high focus on adaptability and deploys unique styles of training to maximize the user's physical conditioning. One thing I love about this series, and most anime series for that matter, are the various power-ups that a character will activate and even discover during a fight. The more powerful the character and more demanding the opponent, the more power-ups to be displayed. Ryan Kure wastes no time here unleashing his bloodlust immediately as the fight begins. This technique is actually a non-technique. Ryan is so driven to dominate people that he emits a murderous aura. He deliberately avoids relying on any technique and seeks to overwhelm opponents with sheer strength and will. From a medical perspective, this is Ryan getting all jacked up on epinephrine or adrenaline, which is a stimulatory hormone that plays a role in the fight or flight response. It is a hormone that is secreted primarily by the adrenal glands and a few neurons in the brain. It increases blood flow to muscles, cardiac output, pupil dilation response, and blood sugar levels. It prepares the body for stress or danger, and it increases both strength and performance. Based on the explanation by Ryan's grandfather, it would appear that the Kyure clan has selectively bred themselves over hundreds of years for the trait of high levels of adrenaline production, in addition to other traits favorable for fighting skill and prowess. Oma counters Ryan's initial barrage with his iron breaker. <laughs> a strike enhancing technique that is delivered when tensing and tightening muscles in the user's hands or feet. It produces attacks powerful enough to leave an impression of one's fist in their opponent's body. After a vicious barrage of bare knuckle strikes to the head and body, one might expect the following injuries in an average human being. A concussion at the very least as a result of the repeated blows to the head, potential fractures of either the face, jaw, or both, and possibly rib fractures or sternal fractures as a result of the blow to the middle of the chest. Not to forget, in rare circumstances, a direct blow to the middle of the chest can result in a cardiac arrest where your heart stops as a result of an arrhythmia in a condition called commotio cordis. But Ryan is not your average human and doesn't seem to be suffering at all. Judging by the smile on his face, he's having a blast. So, Oma decides to change tactics. <laughs> A powerful kick to the groin followed by a forward knee to the face and a head first suplex. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. First, the groin kick. As you can imagine, this is not particularly pleasant. And after having suffered one of these myself when younger, I can assure you that this is not something you want for Christmas. Apart from the possibility of testicular rupture, yes, that is actually a thing, there is the sheer embarrassment of having your gonads punted into the middle of your chest. This is normally accompanied by a delayed sensation of nausea and pain emanating from the pit of your stomach. Not because that is where they end up after being kicked, but rather because your testes normally develop within your abdomen and then descend during the later stages of pregnancy or early after birth. Next, we have the knee to the face. After the previous barrage of blows, an additional knee to the face is not particularly desirable. If not already fractured by the punches, the knee would increase the likelihood of facial fractures such as Lefort facial fractures 
orbital fractures, or fractures of the jaw. There have even been mixed martial arts fighters that have suffered impacted skull fractures as a result of a knee like this. And one need only ask Ben Askren and Jorge Masvidal about how quickly a blow like that can put you to sleep. And then the suplex onto his head. Of course, there's the actual head injury itself and its associated sequelae, which include skull fractures, concussion, and possible intracranial bleeds or bleeding within the skull. But then there is the face first suplex onto Ryan's head. As if his face weren't already beat up enough, Oma drops Ryan directly onto his face. More facial fractures, more facial fractures. But in so doing, Ryan lands with his neck in extension with all of his 207 pounds crashing downwards. This mechanism by itself might result in extension injuries of the cervical spine, which could include extension teardrop fractures, various fractures of the first and second vertebrae, dislocations of the cervical spine, and infrequent laminar fractures as well. If these injuries occurred below the C5 level, they could result in quadriplegia or paralysis. However, if these injuries occurred above the C3 level and immediate medical care were not provided, they could potentially result in death. Oma then launches Ryan with a running soccer kick to either his face or forehead region. For his sake, I hope that Oma connected with Ryan's face as the forehead is one of the strongest bones in the body. I guess that would make me more concerned about Oma's injuries than Ryan's injuries. Uh, although Ryan is an assassin, so he should be able to look out for himself. The battle turns momentarily in favor of Oma. Until... That is one hell of a clothesline. A direct impact to the neck with enough force to invert Oma in a split second. This maneuver would result in a direct blow to the trachea or the windpipe. The trachea is a passageway that connects your pharynx or oral cavity to your lungs. It is a membranous structure that is supported by cartilage rings. As such, it is not designed to withstand clothesline attacks from superhuman deathmatch fighters. Any blow like this that was sufficient to upend Oma would likely result in the fracture of at least one of the cartilage rings supporting the trachea, and possibly even occluding the trachea itself. This is undesirable because it makes it somewhat difficult <laughs> To breathe. If the trachea was not injured by this attack, Oma would at least end up with a bad case of whiplash, where the muscles and the connective tissue around the neck are strained and sprained respectively. I'm starting to understand why people call Ryan the devil. <laughs> It is my professional opinion that a stomp, which leaves cracks in an extra reinforced concrete biting surface, according to the artist, is not one that you would want to hit the bridge of your nose. And being thrown at high speed directly onto your back against such a surface might be equally as unfavorable. Landing directly onto your back on a concrete floor would be a great way to break posterior ribs in the back of your chest cavity. In addition, this sort of blunt trauma to the thorax could easily cause a pneumothorax or partially collapsed lung. A pneumothorax describes a situation where air escapes outside of the lung inside the chest cavity, rather than filling the lung itself. If bad enough, it can prevent breathing and could require surgical intervention to relieve. Another injury that can be associated with blunt trauma to the thorax is a scapular fracture, or a fracture of the shoulder blade. While you might think that it would be easy to fracture the scapula since it is only a thin plate of bone, it is sandwiched between two sheets of muscle front and back and lays flat along the posterior thorax, making it relatively resistant to fracture. Fractures of the scapula in trauma patients are a sign of severe chest trauma and are a clue to look for more serious chest injuries, including a pneumothorax, a hemothorax, or a combined hemoneumothorax. Of course, being stomped on the bridge of the nose would result in a fracture of the nasal bridge and possibly a Lefort maxilla fracture. And with enough force, could even result in facial or orbital fractures that penetrated the cranial vault or brain case. Perhaps the impact mentioned made Oma forget how to protect himself.
If Oma showed up in my office without serious injuries after this fight, I would be beside myself. Due to the last barrage of impacts, I would expect more combination or fragmentation of the already numerous likely facial fractures. I wouldn't really expect to see bones of the face anymore, but rather crumbs, since by this time, Oma's face has been utterly pulverized. With the facial swelling that would be associated with the multitude of facial blows, I would expect Oma's ability to breathe through his nose or mouth would likely be increasingly more difficult. Likewise, it would be hard for him to even see, as his face around his eyes would be extremely swollen. In the unified rules of mixed martial arts, blows to the back of the head and 12 to 6 elbow strikes are disallowed due to their potential danger to the fighter receiving the blow. Here, Ryan combines both at the same time to smash Oma into the ground. I guess this is not the UFC. This could cause a skull fracture to the occiput or back of the skull. Of course, Oma lands face first onto the pavement. It appears that Ryan has a profound distaste for Oma's face since he takes any opportunity to smash it or smash Oma onto it. Any normal human's face would have feebly cried uncle a long time ago, but Oma's face seems to soldier on unfazed. This is kind of funny if you think about it. This video is turning into a laundry list of the injuries you could expect if these fighters had the durability of an average human being. But this is Kangen Ashura and these fighters are anything but average. In true anime fashion, Oma then activates his first real power up, the advanced technique. This is achieved by overclocking his heart, which increases his speed, acceleration, and torque increase, which then increases his damage output. Technically, a faster heartbeat means more blood, oxygen, and nutrients are transported to the muscles. But in reality, as the heartbeat speeds up, so too does the risk for myocardial infarction or heart attack cardiac arrhythmia, or even cardiac arrest. Now, I typically would not anticipate these medical issues with a young athletes such as Oma Takeda. However, with the prolonged intensity of the altercation thus far, the amount of epinephrine that is likely circulating within his bloodstream, and the damage and the consequent stress hormones that are also circulating thus far in the fight, a cardiac event is not out of the question. This is like the myocardial infarction suffered by Officer Fanon on January 6th in the Capitol Hill riots. Even Ryan Kude is surprised by the difference in Oma's fighting ability following the activation of the advanced technique. From a hormone perspective, Oma's advanced technique is similar in nature to Ryan's bloodlust technique. Oma pushes his opponent to use a power-up technique of his own. Removal is the Cure family's secret technique that allows the user to consciously remove the brain's limits on their muscular strength output. While regular humans are naturally unable to access more than 30% of their body's muscular strength, according to the author, except in times of extreme duress, the Cure are bred to access a greater amount of their latent muscular strength. Retired Navy SEAL Jocko Willink has previously stated that when, you're, when your mind is telling you you're done, you're really only 40% done. Leaving an additional 60% left in the tank that is available to be tapped into during stressful and demanding situations. Removal is the Cure family technique allowing them to draw from this reserve. This time, the action is more evenly matched. By this point in the fight, I was almost convinced that both Oma and Ryan were nearly indestructible. <laughs> Any one of these strikes could cause catastrophic injury in your average person. But then, spitting blood from the mouth may indicate a variety of problems. Simple problems would include lacerations of the buccal mucosa, lining of the mouth, or lacerations of the gums. Additional sources of bleeding could include lost dentition, or lost teeth, retropharyngeal bleeding, or bleeding from the nose draining down the back of the throat, 
or bleeding from the trachea associated with tracheal or lung injury. Esophageal bleeding could also occur and would result in frank bleeding from the mouth in copious amounts. Finally, some evidence that these men can grow tired and get injured. At this point, as both participants begin to tire, Oma's finely tuned Nico style begins to show prowess over Ryan's more vicious advances. Injuries that could be expected with this exchange include more facial trauma, as if we needed any, more rib fractures, potentially injuries to visceral organs such as the liver and spleen, potential perforations of the stomach or the intestines, and of course fractures of the hands or feet after using them as battering rams for the duration of the contest. When a regular person is subjected to extreme neck extension as Ryan suffers here, we can expect any one of the cervical injuries previously mentioned. And with the compression of the back of Ryan's neck over Oma's shoulder, it is quite possible that tracheal injury could also occur. Certainly, the anterior strap muscles on the front of Ryan's neck would be taxed to their extreme during the reversal of Oma's chokehold. But again, Ryan is not a normal man. I love a good neck lock jumping suplex reversal as much as the next guy. Oma is quick to try again with another submission that is usually a very effective route to a tap out. I said usually, but not always, especially not here. Can we just imagine for a moment if this fight were happening in the UFC? Ah, the old double forehead to the bridge of the nose trick. A guaranteed technique to clear your sinuses or crumple your face like a freaking soda can. In addition to the facial fractures previously described, orbital fractures can occur with potential complications that can cause visual disturbances, such as double vision or even blindness. At this point, I am not sure how they could even still be fighting. Let's finish this, shall we, Oma? Maybe just hit him harder. So this is the winning punch and the place where the battle turns decisively in Oma's favor. Judging by the point of connection and Ryan's response, we can draw several conclusions. Oma struck Ryan on the lateral aspect of the neck just below Ryan's chin. This caused a lateral bending moment at neck level as a result of the momentum from the punch and the inertia from Ryan's head. We would expect contusions of the neck possible tracheal fracture, and perhaps even a lateral flexion cervical injury such as an occipital condyle fracture or a lateral mass fracture of the first cervical vertebrae. <laughs> but even after that, the fight isn't finished. Oma takes advantage of his opponent's momentum and the reinforced concrete floor to deliver what may be the most crushing blow of the entire bout. Adding to the momentum created by a trip, Oma literally punches Ryan's head directly into the concrete floor. Adding insult to injury, he then pummels Ryan's face repeatedly until he is pulled off by the referee. There are many people who have been injured severely or even killed by hitting their heads on concrete. Cervical fractures, skull fractures, and intramedullary cranial bleeds are commonplace with this injury mechanism. Even athletes who are wearing helmets can be injured in this manner. And then he takes it further. The subsequent facial trauma with Oma's final pugilistic barrage is so mundane in this sequence that I won't even mention it. Instead, I will focus on the potential hand injuries that Oma could suffer, which could include metacarpal fractures and dislocations, carpal metacarpal dislocations, and potentially even distal radius fractures. Way to beat yourself up, Oma. This 
is what it takes to be a top fighter in the Kengen Ashura universe. It is a very brutal place and quite possibly the subject of another future video on this channel. If there is another fight from this series that you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments section down below. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. I just wonder how long it will take the combatants to recover from a bout like that. <laughs>